Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is a pretty uh, interesting problem. It says find all values of c so that the function is continuous on the entire real line. So first, it's worth noting that 1 minus x squared on its own is a continuous function. Likewise, x is also continuous. But when you put them together like this, there might be a discontinuity at c. So the question is to find the values of c that make this function continuous. So a function is continuous uh, if the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to f of c. That's what it means for a function to be continuous at c. There's two other conditions also, but this condition implies the other two. In particular, this means that the limit should exist. So the limit will exist when the one-sided limits exist and are equal. So in this problem, what we'll do is we'll take one-sided limits and we'll make them equal. That will force the limit to exist. So we'll start by taking the limit from the left as x approaches c. So when we take the limit from the left, x is less than c, so we're going to use the top piece. This will be 1 minus x squared. And to evaluate this limit, we just plug in c, so we get 1 minus c squared. Now we'll take the limit from the right, so x approaches c, from the right, and then when we're approaching from the right, x is bigger than c, so we use the second piece. And again, we can just evaluate this by plugging in c, so we get c. So the limit from the left is equal to 1 minus c squared. The limit from the right is equal to c. The limit will exist when the one-sided limits are equal. Therefore, that means that 1 minus c squared is equal to c. So now we have to solve this equation for c. So maybe we can subtract c. So we get 1 minus c squared minus c equals 0. We could maybe rearrange this as negative c squared, negative c plus 1 equals 0. And to make things a little bit easier, we could multiply by negative 1 maybe. So switching all the signs, we get c squared plus c minus 1 equals 0. So I don't think I can factor this in my head, so I'm leaning towards using the quadratic formula. However, in the quadratic formula, you have a, b, and c. So let's be super cheap and, and just really bad, and let's just replace x with c. Because that way, when we have c in the quadratic formula, it's not confusing. So let x equal c. Makes it a little bit easier to deal with. So now all we'll do is use the quadratic formula. So here a is 1, b is 1, and c is negative 1. Remember the form for the quadratic formula is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So a is 1, b is 1, and c is negative 1. And the formula says that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Good stuff. All right, so now all we have to do is plug in the numbers. So we get x equals, so b is 1, so we get negative 1, plus or minus the square root. So b is 1 again, so we get 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4, a is 1, and c is negative 1, all over 2a, 2 times 1. So 4ac, 4, 1, negative 1, looks, looks okay, 4, 1, negative 1. This is negative 1 plus or minus the square root. This is 1 plus 4, right? Because negative and negative is positive. So we get 5, and it's all over 2. Okay? So those are the values of C. This is it. These are our Cs. This is the answer. This is the answer, right? So those are the values of C that will make this function continuous everywhere. So recap, when you first see the question, to make it continuous everywhere, realize that this on its own is a continuous function. This on its own is a continuous function. When you put them together, trouble can happen, right? So the only place you might have a discontinuity is at x equals c. So you want, it to, you want to force it to be continuous there. How do you do that? You force the limit to exist. And how do you do that? Basically, you just take one-sided limits and you set them equal to each other. And that makes the limit exist. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.